Hello, welcome to Mowgli TV. Today we're gonna talk about making an audiovisual synthesizer entirely in Resolum. Since I posted this video, I've had a lot of inquiries about how to achieve this. So I'm going to uh, disclose the secrets of how you can get this going. Back in 2014, uh, before Resolume added all the new generators and sources to create content inside it, I created the Xenoid, an audiovisual synthesizer that worked in a very similar fashion to the one I'm going to show you here today. The Xenoid was controlled through this MIDI controller, which allowed me to play the Xenoid as an instrument. I could manipulate it live, but it also allowed me to play pre-recorded loops. The controller basically allowed for a very tightly synced connection between the audio and visuals as they were generated at the same time using the same controls. I used the Xenoid for many years to perform both solo and in collaboration with other artists to create sound and visuals. I played with it throughout Europe at many arts festivals, including Shambhala in the UK, where I used the Senoid to perform in a full dome, which is the advantage of using generative content when you're doing visuals. It allows you to actually tailor your content to whatever might come at you without having to re-render everything. But that's another subject that I'll touch in another video. Now let's just get stuck in and go into the tutorial of how to get this going. While making an audiovisual synth in Resolume can be a very simple task, it can get as complicated as you want. So I'm just going to go through the basics. Also, you can carry on experimenting, making your own very personalized and customized audiovisual synth. So first things first, what you need to do before you do anything else is put WAV file onto your clip. Uh, you need to put a WAV file even though you might not actually be using the sound on it, as I'll show you in a minute, but to be able to put audio effects onto your uh, Resolume clips, you need to have uh, some sort of sound in there already. An alternative to putting a WAV file is to use a video clip that's also got audio in it. Again, it doesn't matter what the audio is because although you can use it if you want, you don't have to. If you don't have a WAV file handy, I suggest that you just Google for WAV tone. You'll find myriad results from readily accessible WAV files to actual tone generators that you can specify exactly what you want. What I've done is I've gone to one of these tone generators and I've made a sine wave, which is a 440 hertz. As I've said at this point, it doesn't actually matter what this is, but it's handy to use tones as well in more advanced ways of using this audiovisual synth. So I've got this clip here, Resolume, which has got this, uh, what file you can see here. I actually created this in audiocheck.net. Let's just trigger that. Next, you're gonna need an oscillator in VST form. Uh, if you know, VST are effects for audio, which can be used indoors and other applications. I suggest that you go over to melderproduction.com and download this M3FX bundle because it's got a whole lot of VSTs that will come very handy as you start uh, developing your synth. You can use any VSTs, but I found this bundle to be really handy. It's a bit annoying that uh, you need to download this installer that's got all the effects on it. And then from the installer, you can select which ones you want. This um, oscillator is extremely versatile. It's got a lot of possibilities. You can tweak it to extremes. For a free VST, I was more than impressed, to be honest. So get yourself those VSTs. And then we go back to Resolum. And on this clip where we've got our WAP file, we are going to go to our effects. So I've already got all my VSTs installed in here in audio effects. And if we find the oscillator, just drag it across and put it on. So a few things to point out about VSTs in Resolum. The first thing is that there's a bug which I've already communicated to the Resolum developers, which means that some of the labels for the parameters on the VST are truncated. The first characters 
and some of the labels do not appear so you see we've got here this yt tabs that's octaves nts touch so this can be a bit confusing there's a very easy way to work around it which is if you click on the cog it'll bring the actual interface of the vsd up so if you look at this then you can see what the labels are to know what corresponds with what you can move whatever there and as you can see in the corner the corresponding parameter moves inside resolute so you can figure out what everything is another issue i found with vsds inside resolute is that sometimes you get all these ram 1 ram 2 ram 3 parameters for example which i'm not entirely sure what they correspond to in the vsds interface there might be some parameter that is not uh, visible straight away because this VST has got a lot of sub menus and things to tweak it. So they might correspond with that, but have been able to figure out. So sometimes, uh, depending on the VST, you might have to do a bit of detective work to find out what these things are. But in any case, it's not a showstopper. The main parameters are all there. So now I'm going to go through the settings that you need to adjust for this M oscillator. If you're using a different VSD, this might be different because they all vary. If your VSD is different, you'll have to adapt things accordingly. So first thing is we've got this Y and T this. If you open up your interface here, stands for this dry and wet. So dry it's the volume that relates to the WAV that you've got on the clip and the wet is the volume of the oscillator. So what you want to do to start off with is turn the dry down and the wet up so that we don't hear the uh, WAV file, we just hear the oscillator. So now if we trigger this, we've got that tone and if I manipulate this octaves parameter, you can see that that's what we are doing so the oscillator is playing at different octaves so how do you make this play music well there's different ways of doing it the most straightforward one is to use an envelope to animate the pitch which is the touch here because the label is truncated as i've explained before just gonna trigger this again let's get the middle octave at the pitch so as you can see that is the pitch so what we can do is click on the parameter click on bpm sync so now the pitch is animated let's just hear it what we need to do to actually play a tune is animate this parameter right now it's just a straightforward ramp but if we apply an envelope to it like you can see what's happening here and i've got an envelope that i prepared earlier here like you can do this yourself like just experiment with them it's not going to be anything particularly exciting it's just for demonstration purposes but i've got here tutorial tune so so this is what we've got so Remember that this is assigned to BPM, so not only will it be in sync with your master clock in Resolume that I've got at 96 BPM, but you can also change the number of beats that it plays in. So if you divide by two or by one, you can speed and slow down the little melody that you've got. So now let's make this more interesting and actually make an audiovisual synth as it was promised. But next you're gonna go to your sources and to play homage to my senoid that I mentioned earlier, we're going to use a uh, linescape. Let's drop it onto your clip. Let's turn the volume down for an hour of a trick. Pretty sure you'll be familiar with it if you play with any of the sources. And originally, this was one of the very few sources and generators that Resolute had until they added a whole host of other ones which have transformed Resolute into a powerhouse for generative graphics. Let's turn the sound up. And as you remember, the little tune that we've got here, I've got that envelope saved. Now, that's very handy because that means that I can apply that same envelope to any of my visual parameters. So let's just close the oscillator for now. And let's say you want to apply it to the tilt. You just go to your BPM sync. 
uh, make sure it's uh, the same length as you've got in your oscillator. So it's four beats in this case. And then again, apply your envelope and pick the tutorial tune. So as you can see now, the melody is in sync with this parameter animating. You can tweak this further. You might not want the whole range of the tilt to be what's manipulated by the envelope. So you can use the little brackets here to actually focus on an area to make things more subtle or more controlled. So it does exactly what you want it to do and behaves in the way you want. Another thing that you can do is use the dashboard. That is a very powerful way of controlling your audiovisual synth. On my Senoid, I used to have this massive MIDI controller with hundreds of parameters using dashboard and sometimes it's mapping several parameters directly onto the controller itself. I'm going to do a little demonstration. I'm just going to duplicate this clip here. And now I'm going to remove some of the things that I've assigned already. So we can just clear the envelope and clear the pitch and again, do the same on the landscape. So now if we open our dashboard controls and then we drag the frequency to that one, we can play it. And obviously we call MIDI controller and like assign a knob to the frequency. You can just play it like an instrument. And what we're going to do next get the tilt from landscape and drag it over the same one. So now, you can play this as an audiovisual sim. So that's it for now. You can expand this as much as you want and make it incredibly complicated with really good results. You can have as much generative content as you want on it, make really intricate visuals. And it's the same with the sound, the same way that you create generative content by stacking effects, you create different sounds by stacking different VSTs. You can add delays, you can make any sounds that you want. Make this polyphonic if you so want by having different clips on different layers. So you can actually start thinking of making music and the way that you make visuals. It's very similar to how you would do it with Ableton, but you can do it all from here. And although it doesn't have all the possibilities that the dedicated audio workstation will give you, it's still pretty impressive. It's pretty fast to get going. And it's a lot of fun to play. So I hope you push this further and have a lot of fun uh, using your new audiovisual synthesizer. That will be it for now. Please remember to like and subscribe because it really helps my channel and hopefully I'll see you again soon.